Hello everybody, this is Stu Jackson and I play Arwen Templeton in the podcast. Uh, I'm also the editor of the podcast as well, so I'm the one to blame for any poor quality that you might have. Now, joking aside, I just wanted to say a very quick uh, hello to everyone. We're, we're, we're suffering some really strange times at the moment, what with lockdown and the COVID-19 crisis. Now, as a result of that, it means that when we're recording at the moment, we are actually recording separately from each other um, in our own homes and doing it over the internet. Obviously, this can lead to quality issues. So I just wanted to give you a heads up, like, do bear with us uh, through this. We are we did make the decision to keep putting out content where we possibly can at the moment, um, just to hopefully add a little bit of normality uh, to everybody's lives. Um, so it is a small contribution that it is. Um, but I also wanted to make an especially very big thank you uh, to our special guest in this episode. I'm not going to say who it is because of spoilers, um, but I really, really appreciate the efforts um, that he's put in. Uh, so thank you very, very much. You know who you are. And when you listen to this episode, you'll find out who it is as well. Enjoy. Previously on Tales from the Twenty Side. You approach Carlton and you see straight away that something's not quite right. He's got something hanging around his neck that wasn't there when you left him. And he's kind of slumped against the tree. Uh, doesn't appear to be moving. Um, he was a bandit, but I, 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 I grew quite fond of him. You start making your way across uh, the ice, Brother Amos, and you hear a creaking noise followed by a rustling noise. This long, snake-like looking creature uh kind of seems to pass through the ice uh and lunges for you and with a natural 20 lady Dejante kind of winds up again and hammers back into the into the same place that she just hit i produce flame i move slightly around just to make sure that uh, no one else is in my line of fire i launch my my fireball at first i think it's going to miss but then it just catches uh, and uh it starts to melt from the head downwards <laughs> Notes make sense. You're not taking them properly, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. with that said, welcome back, uh, everybody, and all our listeners out there uh, to Tales from the Twenty Side uh, Pathfinder Second Edition Let's Play podcast. Uh, my name is Dom. I'm the games master for uh, this game and for many, many others, hopefully. Um, and I'm joined by our regular three cast members once again, uh, Mr. Stu Jackson. Hello. Mr. Neil Kelly. Hello. And Mr. Darren Mifuchi. All right. All right, fellas. How are we doing? Mm. Great. Not so, yeah. bad. Lockdown. So, lockdown uh, tight. It is another week in lockdown. Um, this, is a, this is a first for us. This is a, this is a, this is a recording in the evening time as opposed to in the daytime. Uh, as we had to put our last one on hold, unfortunately. You guys don't care about that. Oh. That's, that that's not interesting, interesting to anyone. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so we're, 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 st- we're still in lockdown. We're still um, beaving away with our various things. Uh, what, what, what kind of creative projects have you guys been working on whilst you've been uh, locked in your homes? If I any. have written six tracks for my album so far. Nice. Sorry, sorry. And baked a load of cakes that I can't eat because my tooth hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you shouldn't have gone for rock cakes, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> or not brittle. <laughs> What's your album called and where can listeners listen to it? Uh, it is not finished yet. Um, like I say, I've, I've written and recorded six tracks for, for it so far. I'm still working on it whilst we're in lockdown. 
but it will be called Searching for Monsters, and when I've finished it, it will be available to listen to somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. <laughs> <laughs> to be decided. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm still writing Good. it, so, you know. Um, awesome. Well, that sounds, sounds like you've been keeping busy anyway. Uh, Stu, what, what have you been up to? Um, I've, I've joined a, an interesting little group on Facebook. Um, actually, I, I, I know you guys, you, I've invited you all to join it as well. Uh, Quarantine Film Challenge, where each week we make a short film in lockdown, um, less than a minute long, based on a particular theme. Um, and I actually managed to get a vote for my film last week, so that was good. Hey, there we go. A whole vote. A whole, a whole nice. vote. <laughs> Nice. Not half a vote. <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was a good little, but yeah. But it's yeah. good fun. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting to film stuff on a phone, mm. which I'm and not used to. Especially as how, you know, um, you know, five years ago, that would probably have been un unthinkable. But with the way that te the technology has moved on so much in the last few years, you know, it's perfectly acceptable to mm. record something like that on, on a mobile phone. It's because they're, they're so much, uh, the te technology has, has come on so much. Well, what's incredible mm -hmm. is I'm still recording in 4K. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't know that. That's interesting. My, my phone does 4K. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not high quality 4K, but it's still 4K. <laughs> 4K, yeah. 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 Absolutely amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you, Stu. Uh, Neil, been up to anything fun? Uh, yes, I have. I've done a couple of voiceovers. Um, which has earned me a total of £24.85. And uh, I'm told <laughs> there's plenty more where that came from. So uh, hey, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll earn another 20 quid next week if I, if I really, you know, put my back into it. Um, I've also been in touch with um, a guy I used to work with on an education job who's now based in Poland with the English Touring Theatre. And he's looking to record in isolation... Um, English language training videos, so I've just recorded one of those for him today. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll that'll come to something. Otherwise, I've been I've been a lazy ass bastard. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is this is the perfect time time to time to do it, uh, Neil. So mm. I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, what about you, yeah, Dom? I, I in fact have been mostly a lazy ass bastard. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm writing for six thousand different. D and D campaigns that, that I've started running because I, I'm a, I am a madman. Um, uh, yeah, picked up my flute for the first time in ten years, and we've got some more creative things lined up with work as well. Uh, so right now I'm well today I've been storyboarding um, a short ten minute clip uh, of uh, some uh, some some story time. So that that will involve one of our uh, one of our girls reading a story to camera. Uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna animate it, put it to music, all that sort of stuff. Just give it a little bit, bit of production value. Value. Lovely. May maybe I'll write a track that requires a flute solo. <laughs> <laughs> I I will uh, temper your expectations and say that <laughs> I, ha I haven't played in ten years and it shows. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Mm. Uh, anyway, with all the uh, catching up out of the way, um, I think it's about time we get back into our game. What do you reckon, chaps? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, when last we left off, um, our bunch of adventurers, I still don't really know what to call you as a, as a collective. A troop? A troop. We'll go with a troop. Our, tr our troop of, of adventurers um, had, had uh, ventured into the border wood, uh, the snow-covered border wood, uh, to a place known as the High Sentinel Lodge, uh, where they had parlayed with um, the leader of a group of bandits known as uh, Captain Rokar. Uh, Captain Rokar agreed to release his prisoner, um, the Lady Argentia, who uh, our adventurers had been seeking. Uh, he agreed, to, he agreed to, to release her to them on the provision that they came back and helped him deal with some nefarious force that was threatening him from deep in the forest. Um, our adventurers decided to make their way back to Heldron. Um, on their way, uh, they discovered the unfortunate... Uh, body of um, their their bandit friend Carlton, um, who seemed to have been slain in their period of absence whilst they'd left him behind. Um, uh, they did battle with some ice icy creatures on uh, on the frozen river, uh, in which 
uh, the Lady Argentia proved herself to be quite a capable swordswoman, um, holding her own, striking down one of these creatures as they as they fought them. Uh, they made they made their way the rest of the way back towards Heldron, and when last we left off, um, the three of you, Alwyn Templeton, Brother Amos, and Otto von Niederschläger, along with uh, Lady Argentia, um, had just broken the tree line onto um, the the main road. And uh, the first thing thing that strikes you is that um, the snow that's covering much of the forest, it seems to be covering a lot more of the road than it had been previously. It lo- looks like it stretches quite a way, quite a way further out, for, out from, from the forest. Uh, so yeah, adventurers, what would you like to do? Well, I think we keep going. It's it's okay. a bit odd uh, that it se- it seems to be heavy snow and, and it doesn't. I don't remember it snowing, but um, perhaps it did. I don't know, but uh, I think we should just uh, keep going. Well, it was okay. snowing back there, so it's obviously getting closer and closer. Sound. Hmm. What do you think, Brother Amos? I agree. We should keep going. Okay, so the three of you pick up the road, um, moving up towards Heldron. Um, and yeah, before before too long, um, you find yourselves um, uh, you find yourselves out of the, the pocket of snow. Um, it's maybe a mile further up the road um, than you 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 re- remember it when when travelling in the other the other direction. Um, and eventually, you do start to see Heldron up in up in front of you. Um, as, as the sun is starting to starting to draw down. Well, looks like uh, looks like we we made it. I don't want to speak too soon, but uh, I can see Halton right there. Let's, let's pick up the pace a little. I think we're going to um, have to give uh, the young lady in the stables perhaps a bit of an explanation as to. Why we didn't bring the horses back yesterday, but um, yes, maybe give her some money. Some money, yeah, money fixes most things. There we go. Okay, so you make your way into into the centre of Heldron. Um, uh, yeah, uh, as mentioned, it's, it, uh, the sun starts to draw down in the day, so it's getting getting fairly late in the afternoon. Um, the various businesses are starting to close up shop. Um, and as as you enter, uh, you do see uh, Bail on the Beardless uh, kind of on on small patrol out out in, in the village. He's, he spots you as you as you're approaching, and uh, uh, you see big big smile um, wraps across his face. And he he starts walking towards you. Ah, my friends, good to see you again. Hello, Balon. And good to see you too, uh, friend Balon the Beardless. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I assume, uh, I assume your your journey into the wood was successful. As you can see, we have we have uh, the lady Argentia Manasina right here with us, uh, with a complete uh, unqualified success. Oh, of course. Um, I, I, I do apologise, my lady. I couldn't I couldn't uh, couldn't see you there, st- st- standing behind behind Owen here. It's good to see you well. Um, uh, come, come, come! I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll arrange for, for, for lodgings for you. Yes, might need tending to by a medical person. And uh, yeah, Balon sort of looks, looks her over and sort of sees the various scrapes and bruises that is on her and says, mm, "Yes, of course. Um, very well, um, Lady Ajanti, if, if you would uh, please come with me, I will have." Um, I'll have Tessarai take a look at you, and then uh, perhaps in the morning we can see about getting you on your way back to Apara. Uh, she... yeah, be, you'll be fine with Balon, he's, he's friendly. And uh, later, John kind of says, uh, Yes, I, I do know him, he is the captain of the guard. Good to know. Oh, I seem to remember there was some kind of bounty associated with a successful return of Lady Agentia Malasina to uh, Heldron. Uh, Balon kind of looks a bit confused as you say this. Um, and sort of seeing his confusion, um, uh, Lady Argentia kind of looks back at you and says, 
Um, just sit tight for me. Um, I need to call in a favor or two, but don't worry, there, there is some gold in it for you. Yeah, good. I don't remember that, and we've already got the jewel. Well, yes, but uh, we are we are professionals. It would not be seemly to be uh, working for nothing. We have reputations to maintain. The greats are good. The greats are good, yes. Gentlemen, thank you for escorting me out of the forest. It was um, very lovely to journey with, uh, with you for such a short time. Um, be before I forget, and she gives um, the longsword uh, back to you, Orwin. Ah, thank you, my lady. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. yeah, thank you, my lady. Well, the pleasure was all ours, my lady. Yes, well, let's let us go and see. Um, let's just go and see t this tes t Tesseraya. I think you said her name was. Um, and um, my my companions here, they they said that um, m my bodyguard Yuln was was here. Is that correct? And uh, Baylon says, "Ah, yes, the the orphan man. Yes, he's uh, he he's still resting up, I'm afraid. But uh, yes, he's he's in here as well. He'll he'll, he'll I'm sure he'll he'll be glad to see you, see you, my lady." And uh, she kind of nods, and uh, Baylon starts to lead her into um, the Willow Bark Apothecary, which is uh, the same place that that Yorn was taken into um, after he was sort of taken down from the uh, from the horse. Right. I think we'd better get these horses back to the stable. Yes, yes. Good thinking. Okay. Uh, so, um, you head over to the stable house uh, where Sophia Imaras is um, uh, is still working a bit late. It seems that she, she, she's cleaning a saddle of some kind. And she looks up as you approach and she sees you. You see this... Um, Kind of a wry smile creep across her face. And she, she she looks at the three of you and said, and says, um, "Well, well, I wondered where you'd got to." Ah, yes, and, my and here we are. Bulges. We uh, yes, we got um, we got trapped by the snow, it seems, but uh, we did manage to rescue um, Lady Marasine. Did you? This is good. Well, um, this is it good to know. It was not easy. Say again, sorry. It was not easy. No, it's, uh, uh, you, you do look tired. You, you look like you've had a hard time. Um, anyway, um, are you returning these, these horses? Yes, yes. Yeah, but yes. I think we yes. owe you something extra because we're a day late. I think that is true. Um, let me see. You left. Okay, you've been gone. We've been gone for three days. Um, we agreed one silver piece for two horses per day. Uh, so um, I believe uh, you owe me three silver pieces. Each or in total? In to no, this is, um, it was, oh no, you are correct. I am so sorry. Uh, two silver pieces you owe me. Each. Al oh. Alwyn's going to give her a gold piece and say, you keep the change. Are you sure? I don't wish to be um, uh, oh, no, you, thick-headed, but... Um, you placed a great deal of trust in us and gave us a very special deal and it's appreciated and we want to share this appreciation back towards you and, and concentrate um, a bonus for us uh, taking so long to return. Them. That is My very kind. Sincere apologies. Well, I, I tell you what, <laughs> um, a gold is... Is a lot of coin. Um, you know, this was this is a horse for ten days uh, for this. Um, here, have have some, some of it back, and she'll she'll give you four silver back. So I, I will take um, just the total cost of the horses. Are you sure? That's, yes, yes, yes. Know. It's fine. Okay, that's very kind of you. Thank you. They're good horses, as well. They are very good horses. Very good. Yeah. Rarely yes, have I ridden little... better. Good. This is good to hear. Um, so I'm, uh, did they cope all right in, in, in the cold weather? Um, 
as, as you may be aware, we don't get um, such heavy snowfall in this area a lot. Yes, yes, yeah, they were, they were fine, yes, as well as can be expected. Uh, well, this is good to know. Well, well then, my equine friend, it seems you've all earned yourselves a nice juicy carrot. Yes, you have. Come on, get inside. And she starts, she takes the reins and she starts leading the horses back inside. Oh, she means the horses, yes. I, I, I was thinking I could do with a carrot myself. And, uh, she she kind of hears this and looks at the servants and said, Well, if you get over to um, the Dragon's Fangs, um, I know Sobs was doing some roasted vegetables this evening uh, to help with the warmth. Um, perhaps there are some left? Oh. I, th- I think it would be very good to get in there and, and check on our friend, our booster, see if he's feeling any better. Yes, yes, let us do that. Oh, you haven't met our booster yet, have you, Brother Amos? Or did you meet him before we left? I can't remember, I might have been drunk. <laughs> I have not met him. I don't think oh. I have met him, but I will be delighted to make his acquaintance. Of course, you met him, Otto. We went to the Star Song Tower with him. Ah, oh, so, yes, of course, yes, so we did. He was, was a bush. That was a, that How was a long possibly... three days, was it not? He was a bush who worked for the Absalom City Council. How Sa- could you sounds possibly like... not remember that? How could it I sounds forget? Sounds like Otto was drunk as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. how could I forget? Uh, I think uh, I've been overwhelmed by my experiences of the last three days. Really? I, I think we all need a good night's rest. That sounds like that a wonderful sounds... idea. Wonderful idea. It's somewhere where and we I... won't be attacked by something. Yes, and I need to top up my hip flask. Of course. Otherwise, how can you uh, pay your due respects to Kate and Kalian? Indeed. Right, sure. to the pub! Okay, so you make your way back to the Dragon's Fangs Tavern, uh, just as the uh, last vestiges of sunrise slip below the blood horizon. A chill breeze blows through. The sound sensor just as you close the door behind you. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's as rowdy as it was the first time you, the first time you entered here. Um, there's, a, there's quite a few people drinking. Uh, behind the bar, you can see Sog's uh, the halfling bartender with his mop of red hair, uh, busy busy wiping a glass and pouring a drink for somebody. And uh, you see at the far end of the bar, um, looking very hale and hearty, um, a particular leaf fleshy. Uh, as you op- open the door. Um, Arbusto looks over to, to the three of you and um, he says uh, My friends it's good to see you but uh, it has been a few days no? Arbusto, oh, hello good to see you Oh, it is good to see you too my friends yes, I spoke with Balon de Beerless he says that you had gone to the border wood after this uh, lady who had been kidnapped I take it from the fact you are standing here that you were successful, no? Yes, yes, she's she's back. She's getting patched up and healed, you know. Safe this and sad. Un- unfortunately, we cannot say the same for her entourage. Yes, I heard. I had a chance to speak with the man they call Yul. He said it was a savage attack uh. and that he was lucky to escape with his life. Yes, uh. indeed. Anyway, my friends, it does me so much good to see you. As you know, I was no well the last time we saw each other. After we saw each other, I was uh, sick as a parrot, as they say. But uh, shortly after this, my fever, it broke. I had a good night's rest and uh, I begin the day as good as new. Excellent, excellent. Very good to hear. And it's good to see you one more time. You see, tomorrow... I must return to Absalom. I received a letter only yesterday. It seems a person they have managing the edge fund while I was gone is uh, not so good at his job. They need me to come back and fix things. Ah, civil servants, eh? I know. Yes. You just can't get the staff these days. Yeah. Incompetent or corrupt, I, I am suspicious where large amounts of money are concerned. Well, that is why they have called me in to investigate. Uh, Make sure all the money is in the right place. And if it's not in the right place, then uh, maybe we'll find out where it's going, no? Yes. 
Yes, yeah, so they were all rogues. No offence. I'm sure you will soon get to the bottom of it and, and prove your worth. Yes, 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 I'm sure I will. Although, I would much rather be out here on the frontier, under the stars, having more adventures with people like you. Yes. Perhaps one day we meet again, eh? Absolutely. Yes, one day soon. Good, good. Well, let us have yes. a beverage together. You must be wishing to pray to your God, no? Come, come. Yes, absolutely. How do you drink? Well, as a leshy, I'm sure you know, I don't need sustenance in the same way as a human or an elf or a dwarf does. But uh, what I can do, you see this here? And he holds up his arm and there's kind of like, like um, a tube coming out of, uh, of his arm. What I do if I want to get drunk, I put the booze into my flow tube. It's just here. And it spreads through my body. As a result, I don't need to drink as much to have a good time, eh? You get your... But surely the pleasure is in the drinking. No, no, listen, he gets his booze intravenously. I think that's a brilliant idea. Where do I get one of those tubes? Yes, but you get the effects. Where's socks? Well, uh, no, I do not want one of these tubes. You, you, you have the effect, but none of the pleasure of consuming it. The taste, the, the palate. You have none of that. You just simply end up drunk. It is like you're having some kind of seizure or something, or you have become ill. No, it is not for me. Is this not why you fleshy people drink? To get drunk? <laughs> I know, right? We, we enjoy getting drunk. It is a social lubricant, but the drinking is very important. Oh, I see. I'm learning a lot about your culture while I'm here. By anyway, as I mentioned, I cannot drink as you drink. This is my only way of ingesting human sustenance, if you will. I get all of my nutrients from the sun, Norman. Uh, I, I understand, and I hope uh, my comments were not taken as some kind of criticism of your uh, of your physicality, of your your uh, uh, whatever. But uh, yes. No, no, not at all. But uh, now I think about it, I can see why it might have upset you. Your metabolism, I wanted to say, but uh, yes, uh, please, uh, uh, I meant no offense. No, 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 no. It's okay, my friend. Don't worry yourself. Now come, let us drink. I want to hear all of your tales. Yes, I'll get surrounded and drinks in. Where's, where's Socks? Yes, where's Socks? Yes. I was very busy in here. It's, it's like madness in his house. Okay, uh, so where, where are you going, Socks? Uh, to the bar to find Socks. To the bar. You go to the bar, uh, okay. Uh, so you, you approach the bar and uh, Sog's the barman uh, kind of looks up at you and says, um, all right, ah, good, good, good to see good to see some, some friendly faces again. Been a few days, gents, how uh, how goes it? Yes, very good, thank you. We need, um, we need some drinks, we need, um, we need three large drinks and Alwyn will call over to the other two and say, and what do you two want? <laughs> What's the strongest thing on the menu? Ah well, um, I've got some, got a few strong things here. Um, there are some, uh, oh, got, got some, got some nice brandy. That, that, that'll do for the nip, for the, for, the, for the nip in the air. That sounds wonderful. Brandy sounds wonderful. One brandy, three ales, and uh, yourself there, Mrs. Orser. That's you, Otto. Uh, what, what, what? How did you address me? Mr. Mr. Dwarf, sir. I don't know your name. I've not been introduced. You're, you're a dwarf. My name is, my name is Otto, and um, I will have an ale. Thank you. Ale. Four ales, one brandy. Coming right up. And he turn, turns back to the bar, and he busies himself uh, making the drinks. And after a short while, uh, you are presented with all your beverages. Mm. As we carry them back over to um, Arbusto and relay our tales. Okay, and uh, Arbusto uh, sits and listens, listens attentively as you as you tell him uh, the tales of your exploits. Um, seems uh, partic particularly impressed uh, about Otto fighting off um, the giant tatzel worm that, that that nearly ate him. Um, 
And when, when you tell him about the snowman and uh, it exploding, he says to you, Ah, oh, just the way you describe it. I knew this snowman would be <laughs> bad news. And you get to the part where um, you're telling him kind of the last part of the story where you, you're at the highest Sentinel Lodge. And, um, and he, he says to you, huh. Curious, so uh, these bandits, they gave you the captive in trade for a favor, no? That's right. Uh, yes, yes, we need to discuss this, uh, this, uh, this bond of honor we have uh, made with uh, Captain Roca. Well, do you intend to go back or are you still declining? Oh no, we, uh, well, well, I'm going to go back. Well, is there any reason we, we, is there any reason we should go back? Really? Yes. What is, we gave it our was not really a it was not really our word. He was. It was. Um, it was made under duress. I would I, say. I gave my word. I'm going back. Absolutely, it's the right thing to do. Do you are going to fall in with bandits? I'm going to keep to my words and be honourable. It's the honourable thing to do. Well. Give me another ale and uh, I will uh, think some more about it. Um, yeah. Actually, Alwyn will just slide it, one of his spare ales over. <laughs> sure. Okay. Is there anything in particular that you guys are looking to do in this evening? Or are you just uh, getting good and drunk and then bedding down tonight? Let's get good and drunk. Good and drunk and bed down, yeah. Absolutely. Bed down, yes. Okay. Uh, so the evening wears on a little bit. Um, and uh, it's a bit it's a bit strange for you guys because obviously where you kind of time shifted a little little bit um, you know you're still quite awake at, the, at, at uh, like 10, 10 11 o'clock uh, so yeah you 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 carry on for a good a good couple of hours um, in the dragon's fangs tavern and uh, eventually uh, the evening does start to wind down and uh, you find yourselves a comfy place uh, next to the hearth again as you had done before um, so, uh, so, Sogs uh, kind of says to you, um, "Are you heard about what, about um, your exploits in the woods uh, from Captain Balon? Um, you got free board from me for as long as you're uh, as long as you're in Eldrin. Uh, so don't don't worry about that that, that that tonight." Well, that is most kind of you. That is Sogs. very kind of you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, you you find yourselves a warm place near the hearth because uh, this particular tavern doesn't have. Um, Many rooms, and the rooms it does have are already um, o- occupied by by other patrons. Uh, but yeah, you, you bed yourselves down by the hearth. Um, you wake up in the morning, um, and uh, yeah, um, it's it's a new day. Um, you do notice that where Arbusto was sleeping, um, Arbusto has has left. It seems and has left uh, a small a small a small letter or piece of parchment kind of where he was sleeping. Go over and read it. Okay. And, uh, it, sa- it says uh, in sort of quite quite elegant flowery handwriting, which you, you may or may not expect from a man who is literally a ball of flowers. Um, and uh, it, it says... Um, my friends, Otto and Alwyn, and my new friend, Amos... It pains me to sneak out like a rogue, but uh, I must be on my way back to Absalom. If you ever find yourself in the big city, come and look me up, eh? I'm sure we will meet again. Your friend, Abusto Ramirez. I wonder why he felt he had to depart. In, oh, is it still the middle of the night, or is it, is it perhaps later than we think? Uh, so you guys have woken up at about 9 a.m., Ah, he he made an early start and did not want to uh, disturb us. Yes, yeah, that was pretty thoughtful of him. He is uh, Arbusto is a very very considerate man, I think. Do you know, I I just knew at some point or another he was going to leave. Oh, you've been uh, waiting three months to say that, Mister. <laughs> <Stu. laughs> <laughs> da 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 da. Someone oh, passed me another brandy. Da, da, da. <laughs> most, most amusing. <laughs> I just understood what you said. <laughs> Very good. 
<laughs> okay, there we go. Um, yeah, you've you've awoken. You found your letter from from Arbusto. Um, <laughs> um, as uh, as um, you're kind of just getting yourselves together and you, you're reading this letter, uh, the door to the tavern ent- opens and uh, you see um, kind of dressed in uh, a tidier dress. So, so lo- looks more like tra- traveling clothes that, that, than she, she was wearing the day before. Uh, you see uh, Lady Argentia um, uh, coming in, in, into the tavern. You see that she, 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 she looks much better. She's clearly had a good night's sleep. Um, she's been cleaned up by uh, the <clears throat> excuse me by the uh, healers in in the town, and uh, she approaches she she enter, enters 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 the enters the pub and sees you guys at the far end, and uh, uh, walks over to you. She says, um, "Ah, um, good to see you. Um, I was told I may find you here. Um, well, I, I, I was never any good at these kind of things. Um, so here, here is a token of my thanks for getting me out of uh, that God's forsaken forest. And, uh, she hands a pouch of gold uh, to you, Alwyn, uh, which contains 50 gold pieces. That's Goodness awfully me. kind of you. Thank you very much, milady. Um, you didn't have to, but now you have, so, you know, that's very kind. Thank you. You are most gracious, my lady. Yes, it is. Well, it's a, it is a, it is a small thing I can do. Um, now, anyway, I've, it, it seems I'm going to be here in Heldron for a little longer. Um, Yuln is still not, not, not well to travel, um, and I, I certainly don't wish to brave the road on my own after what happened on the way from here from Zimar. Um, so I am going to be staying here in Heldron uh, for, for, for the time being, um, until Yuln is well enough to travel and until uh, my father can send uh, a new escort to take me on to Apara. Well, perhaps um, I, once our business... Go on, sorry. Well, perhaps once our business is concluded, we have, um, we have some more dealings um, with Captain Rokar. Um, once that's dealt with, perhaps we could uh, act as your escort if you'd like. Hmm. She she looks quite thoughtful as you say this, and she says, "Hmm, yes, perhaps that could be arranged." Um, I mean, uh, obviously, my um, yes, th- that could potentially be arranged, uh, but don't um, don't worry yourself too much. As I say, uh, my father will, will will have an escort here um, with within with within a week. Um, and then get, get get us on our way. So don't don't worry yourselves too much. But um, yes, if, if you are indeed around when we move out, I'm I'm sure we, we won't say no to having more people on the road with us. Indeed, or perhaps we can you know take you out to meet your um, your father's um, um, people. Oh, I see. So you can you can present me like a prize. Not at all, my lady. We would be your escort. In fact, uh, I was thinking perhaps you could delay our, our business with Captain Roca in order to continue this uh, this prior engagement. Indeed, it, it was just an offer. You didn't seem like you wanted to stay here, but uh, no, you stay here as long as you like. Enjoy yourself with soup. I was going to wander off to the bar. Okay. Uh, is 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 he always this highly strong? Uh, yes, he can be a bit sensitive sometimes. <laughs> okay, good to know. Well, um, I'm sure that uh, the good Caden Kalian can find him some comfort. Caden uh, Kalian usually does. Uh, any, anyway, and you can see she she looks um, she actually looks a bit awkward to Otto, and she sort sort, sort of takes a moment herself, and she says. Um, you know, I was going to ask um, something of a favour of uh, of the three of you. Um, as I'm going to be here in Heldron for some time, um, I am going to be finding myself, I imagine, quite bored. Um, so if you are in need of perhaps an extra blade in your journey back to 
the good captain. Um, you know, perhaps I could, um, perhaps I could come with you. Is that a good idea? We have, we have only just uh, delivered you from Captain Rokar. You don't want to be going back into his, uh, into his realm, as it were. Hmm. I suppose so. It's just um. I do I do grow so bored um, sitting by myself, and it it was quite exhilarating um, fighting alongside side you on on that ice. It it was um, indeed, and we were glad to have you there. Your, your skill is uh, is something to behold. But uh, yes, to go back to Captain Rokar now. Well, uh, why did we leave in the first place? If we are going to bring you back. Uh, 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 for myself, I would rather I would rather dishonour this pledge that we made under duress and uh, escort you further to be reunited with your with your father. Hmm. Okay, I I do see the sense in what you say, um, but uh, as I say, I will I will be here for some time before um, others arrive from Opara. Um, if you do change your minds, I I'm I'm sure to be here. Thank you, my lady. Thank you. Um, good, uh, good, good day to you, Otto. Um, and good oh, day do, to you. Do, do tell Alwyn I didn't mean to upset him. He'll be fine. I, I'm sure he has quite forgotten it now. Caden Kalian is very good like that. Okay. And uh, she'll give you a nod, and she'll give you um, sort of a, a, almost a bow of sorts, and she she leaves the uh, the pub. Well, what do you make of that, Brother Amos? <clears throat> I think you were right. It seems strange to take her back. Yes, although she was very useful, but it, 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 why did we bother coming from there? We could have just stayed there. Yes. Captain Rokar looks different now from a distance, I think, to her. I think perhaps you're right. I know what uh, I know what Alwyn is going to say. Let's see. Well, I, well <laughs> perhaps we should ask him because yes. I, I, rather than anticipate, but I, I'm fairly sure he will. Uh, yeah. He will say that the, the three of us should go and. Let's but, find out his thoughts on the matter. Yes. Oh, and those joining me at the bar. I've, oh, I've got indeed, some money indeed. here for you. Uh, Alwyn. Alwyn is... Um, um, oh, just to... Um, so Alwyn is going to share out the 50 as best he can. Um, well, why don't we have... Um, you, you got the big round in last night, so why don't we have... Um, if, if perhaps uh, Brother Amos and I have... Um, 16 gold pieces each, then that leaves uh, 18 for you. That's very kind of you, thank you. Okay. Well, it's not kind, it's simply uh, acknowledging that you uh, so I have another 16 gold pieces, that is a... Uh, and, uh, yes, perhaps I can use the extra to go buy myself another cloak. Well, you have plenty left over, yes. Indeed. Is, um, is Lady Stuck Up gone then? Uh, yes, she, she sends her regards and uh, hopes that uh, she did not inadvertently cause you any offence. They're trying to bloody offer to help, you know. Mm. Um, she was uh, intimating that she would be bored here in our absence and um, suggested that uh, she join us to go and rejoin Captain Rocker. But I, I said, oh, I don't see the point of that. We've only just come from Captain Rocker. We have brought her from Captain Rocker. We didn't bring her all the way here just to take her back again. Oh, no, that is a bloody good idea. I mean, she's very handy with a sword. And, of course, she'd she be is... with us rather than, you know, a load of valets who can't protect us properly. It's a very different well, situation. It, it would, but why did we bother coming all the way from Captain Rocker and fighting those ice snakes and, and, and all We could have just stayed there. To, to recover and get ourselves best prepared. You have an answer for everything, <laughs> are we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kate and Kelly and guys mean all things. Hmm. 
So. Well, I'll, I'll... How much more... Go on. No, please, don't, don't let me interrupt. No, no, go on, go on. I was going to say, how long should we uh, rest up here before we feel fully uh, recuperated enough to go and rejoin Captain Roca on his... Uh, on his uh, pledge? Well, it's, um, it's obviously getting worse out there um, and the snow's getting thicker up, so... I'm thinking the sooner the better, and I was thinking maybe it'd be a good idea to set off after lunch. Mm. With or without the lady Argentia Malasin? Well, with if she wants to come with us. Like I say, she's very handy. Well, she is handy indeed, and if that's what she wants to do, then... um, Weren't you, um, weren't you uh, going to court her, Otto? Be a good chance for you to demonstrate what a wonderful suit you'd make. Perhaps it would, yes. And of course, are we not indeed professionals? Well, our commission was to, to um, rescue the Lady Argentia Malassine and bring her back for the financial reward. And this we have done, we have been rewarded. So, of course, it does not matter what we do next. If we take her out to see uh, Captain Rockar again, well, that's different. That's a different contract, is it not? Yes, you have way brought me around to your way of thinking. I suppose that's the way of looking at it. But, um... We have discharged our commission. What do you think, Brother, B- Brother Amos? <sighs> uh, I... Mm. Let's bring her. If she wants to come, let her come. Then we are agreed. Settle then. She was very good with a sword. She was indeed very good with the sword. She would not be a, a, a passenger on this journey. Yes, and she, she can have that one on semi-permanent loan. Um, that's fine. Um, but what are you better go tell her? Because, you know, I'm not speaking to her at the moment. Oh, well, uh, allow me. I will be happy to yes. do it. Here you are. Take this with you and you'll hand over the masterwork longsword. Ah, for, the, for, for my lady. I will go and present it to her and invite her to join us. Come on, Brother Amos. Let's have a drink while he does that. Brilliant idea. Yes. And then I can moan to you about things like she might as well have told me I was short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so uh, Otto, you make your way out, out of the dragon's fangs um, and you quite quickly find uh, Bale on the Beardless uh, who directs you to where um, <clears throat> uh, Lady Argentia is, uh, is, is, is lodged. And um, you meet uh, you meet her and she, she she sees you and she sees the sword that you're carrying like, yes so uh, I I, uh, I I present the sword to my lady Argentia she of course uh, I, words are superfluous yeah her, her, her face case. lights up as you present it to her and um, before you've had a chance to say anything um, she uh, looks at you and says ah so um Am I to understand that uh, you've changed your mind? And I say, yeah, you, you, uh, you, uh, you uh, perceive the situation exactly, uh, my lady Argentia. Yes, we have uh, discussed it amongst ourselves, uh, and uh, uh, we, we, we know that you are a very useful person to have in the kind of situation we might find ourselves in. We, uh, we have discharged our commission and brought you back to... Uh, brought you back to... Um, um, held on as as agreed we have been paid so uh, what happens next is a completely different matter so we are we have decided we are perfectly willing and would enjoy your company and um, and your skills as we re- as we return to Captain Rockar to deal with this matter of the um, the um, the Teb Noton menace uh, this is good to know um, thank you I must say thank you for for, for the chance um, uh, when, when do we leave? We decided we would leave after lunch, my lady, if that is convenient for you. Uh, that would be lovely, yes. Um, yes, I should 
I'll speak to Yun and see if he has any 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 light armor kicking around. That's good. Good thinking. Light armor would be good. Okay, and uh, yeah, she takes she takes the sword from you um, with a thank you, and um, uh, yeah, are you heading back to the tavern? We, uh, we will we will be in the uh, the dragon's fangs tavern, yes, uh, well, um, and having our lunch there. Um, join us whenever you feel ready. Of course, I will do. Th- thank you, Otto. I will see you soon. I look forward to it, my lady. More than you know. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> not at all. Sorry, she didn't hear it. <laughs> yes, that was that was an aside as I left. I muttered <laughs> under my breath. There we go. Okay, uh, so Otto, you return to the Dragon's Fangs Tavern, um, where you find uh, Brother Amos and um, and Alwyn. Um, yes, I, I am. I'm pleased to report that our Lady Argentia Malasine will be delighted to accompany us. She has readily taken up the longsword and she will join us presently. I, I told her that we intended to set off just after lunch. And she will adjust okay. her plans accordingly. i going to get myself a cloak. Actually, I might have a look if there's some cold weather gear. That might be a good idea. Um, my lady Argentia, uh, is kitting herself out, as you say, with some light armor. Oh, I've I've got some studded armor, but perhaps that might be better on me anyway. I need to check yes. that. Yes. Mm. Uh, so, for studded leather armor, Stu, you do need um, a strength of twelve. And uh, uh-huh. looking at her, um, she doesn't look terribly strong. She looks quick rather than strong, that makes sense. Okay. Um, that's fair enough. But uh, yes, I think off to the shop so we can get some warm warm clothing. Get kids up ready for the snow. I could use some fresh clothes myself. Yes, I, I could do with that. Uh... Something fresh. You, you've only just had some fresh clothes. You've got some uh, Captain Roadcast place at the lodge. They gave you some fresh clothing. Mm-hmm. Yes, but that was uh, that was some days ago. I, I will uh, freshen up again. I, I, Who knows how long it might be before we freshen up I, again? I meant Amos. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were talking to me. Yes. yes I've got, I'm still hungover from last night. <laughs> It's easily done, isn't it? Yes. I'm suffering today. You've you've never told me, Brother Amos. Um, to which to which uh, deity do you um, do you do you um, belong? I don't like to talk about it. Oh, okay. Apologies. Brother Amos doesn't like to talk about it because he hasn't figured that out yet. <laughs> <laughs> In my in my head, uh, Darren, Brother Amos is like Benny for, from from the Mummy, where he has like a whole load of different holy symbols and just picks whichever one he thinks is the most relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the different gods speak through me, which is another reason why my accent is so ropey sometimes. <laughs> it changes depending on which god is speaking through me. Which which of the voices am I channeling today? Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's that's terrifying to know. Um, okay, yeah, off to the shops. Okay, uh, so you head over to um, Gold Smiles Goods and Sundry. Uh, you're met again by by uh, Jace Goldsmile, uh, who you've had dealings with in the past, and uh, you oh. inquire about some uh, some winter clothing. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, and particularly a cape, a, a cloak rather. Okay. Uh, she says to you, "Well, um, we don't have much in the way of warm clothing. You know, it's uh, well, it, it's supposed to be summertime. You know, we haven't got that kind of stock in just yet. Um, l- l- let me see what I can what I can put together." And she disappears. She disappears into her kind of storeroom. She comes back a few minutes later, um, carrying three uh, quite heavy-looking fur fur cloaks. And she says to you, All "Right, I don't I don't have any." Uh, Sort of winter gear, as it were, but I, I did find these quite fine, uh, qu- 
quite quite nice look quite nice looking heavy cloaks i mean they should do uh they should they should should, should at least protect you from, from the wind if nothing else that's that's marvelous thank you and um, do you happen to have a fourth one we're going to have a, a fourth. yeah we're going to have someone come with as you see uh let me see these were buried under a big pile of stuff let me let, let me go and have another look she can't she goes back into uh her storeroom uh she comes back out um i don't have um i don't i don't have another of the coal by the cloaks these these thick furry ones i, I do have this uh, this this regular one though okay we'll we'll take the regular one as well um how much for those then please uh, let me see. That'll cost you. Don't need them gift wraps, just so you know. Oh, hmm. oh, okay. All right. That that was going to be my next question. Can tell you've <laughs> shopped here before. Hey. Yes, um, oh, most uh, um, most pleasurably, my lady. She thinks she thinks to herself for a second and says, um, uh, "So, let's call it two silver for the thick cloaks, one silver for the." Uh, the regular one, that'll be seven silver pieces, please. Seven, uh, happily hand over seven silver pieces. Um, All right, here you are. Um, you, vent, you venturing, venturing out, are you again? Yes, go head out into the cold and see what we can do about it. I see. Um, if, you're, if you're heading into the forest again, um, could you keep an eye out for my, for my neighbour? No, oh, where, where's your neighbour gone? Um, so my neighbour, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a chap by the name of um, Dryden, Dryden Kepi is, he's, um, he's a local hunter around these parts. Um, got it into his head a day or two ago that he, he was going to go off and find some massive weasel that, that, that he'd seen. Said, 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 he, said he, he was going to kill it, skin it and bring, its, bring, bring, bring all its meat back to us. Ah, so this Dryden Kepi's on a quest. And how I guess you could say that. And, he's just doing and, his job, really. He's, a, he's hunting around here. And how long has he been gone? Um, maybe two days. Yeah, two days. Two days. Uh, are you starting to become concerned, wench? Um, less of that language, please. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, this is a respectable establishment. Um, but to answer your question, uh, no. Um, well, I mean, a little bit. See, no, normally when he goes out on his hunts, he's back uh, the same day. Uh, that's what that's what makes this a, it's a little worrying. So just uh, just keep an eye out for him if you if you go in that. Well, way. yes, I mean uh, hunting a creature like that shouldn't be too difficult because I imagine it's weaselly spotted. <laughs> uh, so weaselly recognised, indeed. Well, well, uh, yes. yeah, he's totally different. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you're killing me, brother, uh, Alwyn. <laughs> Never, I, I fear my sides may split if I spend too long in your company. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Otto appears to be having a seizure of some description. Um. <laughs> okay, um, so it's this, this Dryden chappy. Um, what nature of chappy is it just so we're looking for the right sort of chappy? Oh, he's a he's a he's a he's a, he's a human. Human. Quite tall. Pro- pro- probably about as tall as you, actually. And she she points at you, you, Owen. Okay. And any distinguishing features? Mm, Does he have a head, see. for example? <laughs> I mean, he certainly had a head when he left. So I would hope so. Okay. Looking for someone with a head. It's good. Well, that narrows it down. <laughs> it's good to know. Right, we shall certainly. Um, do you know if he went north, south, east, or um, the other one? Well, he said he was going south into the border wood. Um, he'd heard stories of this this giant weasel that that, that folks said they'd seen. A giant white weasel, they said. Um, we all said it didn't exist, and, he's, and, and they're talking rubbish. But um, yeah, he's he, he's gone off. He's determined to prove it. Prove it's there. White. Says he's going to kill Ooh. it and bring, bring his pelt back. Ooh. Okay. We'll certainly keep an eye. Well, we'll yes, we'll keep a lookout for him. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I did. I don't have anything else to um, um, to purchase, gentlemen. Well, let's go get into some trouble. 
Yes. Let us go back to the uh, dragon's fang and, and await uh, my lady. A gentle malatine. Alwyn will hand each of them a warm weather cloak and put on the normal one. Mm. Warm weather cloak, you say? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, cold, cold weather cloak, not warm weather. Uh, cold cloak. weather, sorry, yes. A warm cloak I, I, for the cold I, I, weather. I knew, I knew. Warm cloak for the cold weather, <laughs> yeah. there we go. <laughs> Uh, cool. So the three of you head back to the Dragon's Fangs Tavern, um, and uh, you sort of settle in for the rest of the morning. Um, you have uh, something to eat. You have, um, uh, I, I assume, you, I assume you have a drink. I assume it's just a given at this point. Oh yes. <laughs> there you go. So you, ha- you have yourself a beer, um, and uh, you, uh, yeah. A bit, before too long, uh, kind of just as you're finishing up uh, your lunch, uh, Sogs has put on um, some 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 bread and cheese uh, this time. Um, and before too long, just as you're finishing that, uh, the door to the tavern opens and uh, in walks Lady Argentia, uh, now decked out in looks to be a leather armour of some kind. Um, her hair is tied behind her head in um, sort of uh, quite a quite a neat bun just so it's more, more out of the way. And uh, she finds you at the bar, and she says, um, well well met, gentlemen. Um, are you rested? Are you ready? Yes, Otto got you a nice cloak. And he'll point out the... Uh, you are, the, you are too cloak. gallant, uh, my friend. Ah, this is, uh, this is very, very, very kind of you. Thank you. Um, it's been... Uh, it is, uh, yes, it, it was cold. This this should keep uh, keep the wind at bay. Mm. I, I was thinking uh, that perhaps uh, instead of drinking and paying homage to the great uh, Caden Kalian, perhaps we should have been doing things like sorting out horses and supplies and food and that sort of thing. Just a thought. Uh, I mean, in, ter- in terms of supplies, we can. I, I, I'm happy to hand wave that and say you did that whilst you were over at Gold Smiles Place. Right. Cool. Um, yes, and as, so, as for horses, well, the question is, do we really want horses? Because if it gets really deep snow, they might become bits of liability. You do, you, you do recall there was a point as you've gotten deeper in, um, where you were going no faster on horseback than you were than you would have been on foot. That's what I'm thinking, yeah, and uh, might also be, you know, quite difficult to look after. I think we'll be well, less travelling. To walk. Yeah, less. Uh, how cambered. how far is it? I remind. I can't remember. It's it's several miles, is it not? It's about this far. Yes, it's a long way. It's a long way on foot. Uh, yeah, it's about it's about it's about six miles back to the edge of the forest, and then from there, um, all things considered, it's. If you were to be going in a straight line, it'd be about another six miles to the lodge. Mm. Um, but you'd be obviously travelling through through the snow, kind of twisting and winding. So it, it works out a bit a bit more than that. I think it's fair to expect to have to camp in the forest overnight. Yes, I, I think let's just take it as a given. We're going to have to do that, and we'll get we'll get to the lodge tomorrow. <coughs> It is not a great distance, but the going is hard. Hmm. It's going to be difficult with horses anyway, and then there's something else to feed and tie up and not get killed, you know. You're thinking of losing your deposit, of course, if uh, your horse gets killed. Right, why has it all got to for me in this episode? I mean, today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe compromise and we take one horse. For the dwarves' little short legs, <laughs> and uh, perhaps uh, my lady Argentia Malasine would like a horse. Uh, I don't see the need, if I'm honest. Um, if only one of us is on a horse, then none of us should be on a horse. It makes more log- logistical sense. Of course, you are quite right, my lady. Uh, then I will not ride a horse. Yes, might only have little legs, but you can keep up with this, can't you, Marcel? 
I think I can manage, yes, because, uh, yes, if nothing else, I, I have the gift of fleet foot, do I not? Fleet step. I'll take your word for this. If I, if I get left behind. It's good. <laughs> right, let's all tuck in. Or, or I could throw tangle foot at you until I catch up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so the three, the three of you um, with Lady Ajantia, um begin to make your way south out of Heldron. Um, you start making your way down the road back towards uh, the border wood, and um, si- si- similar to yesterday, you find that the snow has crept uh, further out from from, from the wood. Um, not not as much, maybe by about a third of a mile, um, as as the day before. But uh, yeah, this uh, y- you're getting the sense that this kind of pocket of winter definitely seems to be spreading and getting larger. Um, mm. You begin to make your way back to um, the forest, and you find yourselves at the same point where you'd entered last time, uh, where, where the carriages had had, had left the road. Um, and you start to make your way into the gloom of the forest and that is where we're going to end for this session Mm. Mm. Ah, the gloom of the forest the gloom of the forest Tales from the Twenty Side is a Fiegel Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Nazar Ryback from Hooksounds.com. Editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching Tales from the Twenty Side or by visiting TalesFromTheTwentySide.com.